Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to procedurally generate tracking markers for sort of an FUI look. This week's tutorial is sponsored by School of Motion, so thanks to them for that. If you're an aspiring motion designer, or you're somebody already in the field, School of Motion has excellent courses taught by industry-leading professionals, so you can kickstart your career or learn some new tricks. So if that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. So this is what we're going to be making today. All of these little tracking markers are procedurally drawn based on a mat that we drew from the source footage. As with most of our tutorials, this one's not really about the specific settings. It's more about the concepts behind what we're doing. But if you want to know exactly what I did, or you want to jumpstart on the setups, you can download the project file, which also contains all of the source footage. So let's take a look at how we built that. Since we're going to be using this base footage a lot, I made this pre-comp for source footage, and we just have some drone footage of Tampa in here. I shot this footage at dusk, obviously, so that actually makes it kind of perfect to track the car lights. The actual base of this thing is going to be output in a different comp, so I'm not really going to mess with this version in here. I don't have any effects or anything on it. So then you're going to take this source comp, and we're going to put it in our mats comp here. I have a couple of different ones for just different things I've tried to do with it. The one that I settled on initially was this. It's just a tint and a levels. So we're tinting it to gray tones, and then we're going to use this levels to bring it back to just like a couple of dots of white over a black field. You can see I have the gamma here set almost all the way to white. So what we're really going for here is just little dots of white. We don't really want like any kind of fields of white. Anything like this is really going to mess up the end effect. So we got to crunch it down a lot. So then I took this mats comp and I put it into a new comp and I called it marks. Make sure you have your quality set to full, not like half or something like that, because that actually affects how many of these points will show up. This comp is where we're going to generate all of these marks. Now, if you notice, I actually have this comp bigger than my source footage, and that's because we need to rotate things around to get these X's. So let me turn this off. We'll go down to the very bottom one, these diagonal lines here. All of the marks in this project are built exactly the same way. So let me turn these off so you can see what happens. So this is our base comp with those little dots, and they're kind of hard to see, but they'll become more apparent in a minute. The first thing we do is we actually run a transform on here. The only thing that's changed is rotation. So we're going to rotate it negative 45 degrees. And we're going to use minimax, and I have it set to maximum with a radius of 10 by the end of it, although at the beginning it's keyed to 30. So they start larger and then they scale down. Notice I have this set to just horizontal. I'm not using horizontal and vertical because I don't want these things to be blocks. So set that back to horizontal. And then after that, I'm just going to undo that transform with another rotation, this time positive 45. This layer above it is basically the same thing, except for the rotations are reversed so that we get the other diagonal. Then we add that back on top. This final one doesn't have any rotation because we want these things to be boxes. This one's a little bit different from the others because I have the same thing with minimax. I have this set to just horizontal, but I also have one set to just vertical. This allows these things to actually be rectangles to start with instead of just squares because we can use different values. So you can see we start with 44 wide here and 20 high. And then we run fine edges, which gives us a black on top of white image. And so we invert that to get the white boxes. And we add that back over everything. And now we have boxes with X's inside them. And then we're just gonna treat our base footage. So I have a couple of looks set up in here. The first one is this IR thing. It's based off like a Photoshop tutorial I found. I'll try to link that down below. But basically if you Google like IR look or anything like that, you can set up something similar. We just have a little glow on top applied with another Minimax. And you can also go crazy and add yet another glow if you kind of want that like night vision, like super blown out look. Well, that was initially pretty cool to me. I actually found a different version in between and that's actually using CC kernel. I'm just messing with the settings to kind of get a more predictable mat that I can draw out of like edges and different things. But at some point I inverted the colors and ended up with this and I think it looks pretty neat. So then we have a tint effect on it and then CC kernel. And on line one, we have two, zero, zero. Line two, we have zero, negative 0 0.08, zero and the bottom's all zeros. You can mess with this one to get a different look, whether you want some of those clouds or something like that to come in, or if you want them to be non-existent. But that gets us to the version that you guys saw in the preview. This is kind of an open-ended effect, and what's important here is that you actually experiment with pulling the mats. It's not really about the particular settings or anything like that. Your goal is basically just to get little white dots out of some part of your source footage. So let's take another look at this mat comp. So as you've seen, this is where everything is really built from. So let's talk about some strategies of how you can make these mats. So the first one we've seen is tint and levels. And that works if you have kind of like a dusk drone footage or something like that, where you can actually get a good separation between your highlights and the rest of the footage. But that won't work on everything. So let's pick a different source. So let's click back into mats. And now we have this one in the source footage here. So if we mess around with this, you can see there's not really any kind of highlight I can pull off of here that's going to be useful. So let's try something else. You can see in this one, I have a tint effect. 
and then I have a CC kernel with a bunch of different settings. I just messed around with that a lot until I got something that seemed usable. If I turn this levels off, you can see that that leaves me with kind of like all of these windows and different things. There's a car here, but I don't really want these to be completely solid lines. So let's put a levels on that. This levels is about the best that we're going to get on this. So let's see if maybe we can mess with some of these settings and get some of those dots to go away. Let's bring that down a lot. Let's bring some of these other ones down as well. It's going to leave us with less trackers, but they're not going to bunch up and make a bunch of X's on top of everything. Let's click into this one since that's kind of bright. This is not the fastest thing to render since some of the source footage is 4K and it's H.264 because it's from a Mavic. So I'll pop back in when we're done rendering this a little bit. These kind of blink a lot, but we're actually getting some of this traffic kind of tracked, which is pretty cool. If you want more tracking markers on here, you might be able to actually section off this image into different pieces and then pull different mats from different sections. You're not really just limited to one layer in your mat comp. If you're wondering why this looks a little bit blocky, it's because we're also using Mosaic on top of a copy of this IR image. But you can turn it off and make it cleaner if you want that. You're also not limited just to having luminance values. So let's check out a different piece of source footage and let's track these red lights on the back of these cars. In this Mark's Red Comp, I'm actually not even going through a mat. I'm just bringing the source in directly. These are both set up the same way because we're doing the X's thing. So one's rotated one way, one's rotated the other. So let's turn these all off. Those two. We turn this other one behind it off. All right, so you can see that we have a set mat on here. In this case, we're taking saturation. So the most visible parts of this thing are gonna be the most saturated parts. After that, I have another set mat, and I'm actually just bringing in the red channel. So this is gonna keep the most red parts of the image. Then I have a levels on here to take down the alpha. So we only have like the parts that are super saturated and super red. And then an important step in between is to add a solid composite because right now we're actually completely transparent other than those red dots. And for everything to work the best way, we really need to have a solid behind everything. So we're just compositing black back in. And then we're doing our rotation transform, our minimax with a line, and then rotating it back. Doing the same thing to both of those layers gives us red X's on everything. So if we go in here and we play that, you can see all of the red parts are tracked. Even like the little don't walk sign that's over here will eventually light up. Ooh, good time in there. And this source footage is just basically inverted. We're just tinting it black and white, throwing some invert on it, levels, and we have kind of a pseudo IR look. So if we play it, you get something like this. So even the lights from the actual traffic light come in. It's pretty cool. Street light on that one was on. Even though this was daytime, good broken street light there. Shows up in cool X's. So let's do one more example really quickly. We'll grab this downtown UT footage right here. Move it to the front. It's got a little bit of an angle. We're going to scale this thing down maybe like 53% because we're going to take down this angle. It's so like negative 1.2. Let's bring it over here. See where it actually like starts moving. It's kind of slow again because it's H.264. After Effects H.264 are not very good together. There we go. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's bring this into our mat, which we've already done because it's in the source comp. I already have a couple more of these set up, but let's just turn these off and make our own. So we're going to duplicate the source footage. I'm going to hit Shift Command E to dump everything off of it. I'm going to turn it on. Base of everything is tint. I don't think we're going to be able to bring anything off of levels, but let's try that real quick first. Eh, it's not bad. These are kind of cool. I don't really want these like big fields of white there, though. Could possibly do a minimum after that. Uh, so let's do minimax. Let's do minimum. Of course, that's just going to get us those couple of spots. So let's try something different. Let's dump this levels here. Let's add a CC kernel. Let's open up all three of these lines. Let's crank one of these up. Let's crank the middle one all the way down. And you can see we're starting to get kind of the edges. Let's bring this one back up a little bit. Let's do a levels. Let's see, bring that in. Now I'm starting to get a couple little dots. It might be hard for you guys to see because they're really just like one pixel, but that's actually kind of nice. 
So let's check that in the night vision comp. It's not bad. It's actually a lot more there than I thought, but that actually works pretty nicely because it's tracking these cars over in here. I'm actually pointing at this with my hand. You guys can't see me. All right, let's play that. There we go. That actually tracked a lot better than even the test one that I did earlier. I like how these cars are all stuck together. And this like faux infrared look actually looks pretty neat. I'm glad I stumbled upon that. That's why it's important to experiment with things. And you can get a lot of different stuff out of CC kernel as we've found in the past. So definitely just screw around with all of those numbers because you can get some interesting stuff you weren't even intending. So that's basically how you set this thing up. You can also add some interesting things like tracking some of the stuff in the background. These like cranes might be pretty neat. This building. Just draw some lines from one thing to another and it could be really neat. If you want to add to that IR look, maybe add a little bit of glow. Possibilities are pretty much endless. All right. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I actually found a pretty cool tool that I'm going to write about soon that I used in this tutorial to actually make the project files for you guys. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.